Is there something telling you that your dreams will never come true? Well, I got news for you today. Is this not a good or a feel-good message? These are going to be today, in today's episode, a true testimony on how God did the miraculous and helped someone achieve his dream. We have Atna Maksud coming with us today in today's program. And he's going to dispel self-defeating thoughts that are in the way and also sometimes even sent by the enemy against you in regards to achieving your dreams. Before we hear from Brother Atnan, I do want to share two shout outs to Burn Z and Victor Noriega, who have also subscribed to our program here, Empower and Counsel with Pastor Sammy. Thank you so much for subscribing. Like them, we need your help. How is it that we need your help? Well, the help is very important. We need you to click on the subscribe and the follow or activate the notification bell so that when we have new programs, you are alerted that we have a new program and you can hear it in its totality. Why is this important? This is very important because just recently we have heard how there's even uh, an attempt by platforms to not only just deplatform Christians and deplatform pastors and ministers who are preaching the word of God in an uncompromised manner, but they're purposely trying to steer people away from actually hearing the programs. However, what bypasses that is when we have your help by clicking on the subscribe, by clicking on the like buttons and the follow buttons and the notifications. You can do this and we need you to do it on all the platforms that we're in. We're on Spotify, Rumble and YouTube. We count on you. You want to make a difference. You want to stop the spirit of the world that is against Christ. We need you to help us too. So again, don't forget also that all our programs are available in Spanish, in the program Poder y Consejo con Pastor Sammy. And now, let's go on. And so with us, uh, we have joining us uh, Brother Adnan Maksud. Uh, Brother Adnan, please say hi uh, to the audience here. Hey, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Sammy. I'm so honored to be on your broadcast, and uh, I'm just thrilled to be here. Uh, and Brother Adnan, I, I, I'm excited to have you. It's a big privilege for you to be here with us. And uh, would you be able to share a little bit with uh, the audience as to where they can find you in regards to your programs online, satellite, or, or social media? So um, anybody who's wondering like, hey, I want to hear some inspirational words and the word of encouragement and hey, how can we connect with your ministry? So I'm going to encourage people to go on CT in Houston. You can go on there. Uh, CTN Houston Facebook page. That's where most of our programs are archived. And also CTN Houston YouTube page. And then also if people are wondering who Adnan McSue is, uh, you can ma make sure search on your Facebook. You can go on the uh, Facebook and you can find some of the things that I post and write to encourage people. And uh, it's just a, a really amazing social media, I think. And the media, especially nowadays, it's uh, it's it's a great tool in the hands of Christians to reach those they will never meet in person. Correct. And, you know, just like I am very honored that you're here with us. Uh, the reason that I'm very honored to have you here with us is uh, Brother Adnan. For those of you who are not familiar with him, uh, it comes under a, a huge, huge recommendation and endorsement with people such as Jerry Seville and many, many more people. Brother, I am so uh, blessed when I hear you also interview other people, uh, you know, who are authors, who are conference speakers, or even people in the mission field. And that is amazing. What So when he talks about inspirational word, we're talking about highly recommended inspiration uh, from people who are who have been in ministry for many, many years. So thank you so much, Brother Adnan. Please tell us in regards to you are, I believe, the the general manager at CTN Houston? Yes. So I'm the general manager at CTN Houston, although I never thought that I will get to manage a uh, whole television uh, station. Uh, I always had the desire to, you know, uh, be on the television, and uh, that was my passion. So I started a show called Late Night Talk Show back in 2017, and I started building up that platform called Vision TV. Mm -hmm. And zero followers, um, 
from it's it's a, from a zero it's like pretty much built from the scratch mm. so we when we started this platform i did not know this platform is going to be that huge so after three years this platform reached from zero followers to five million uh followers all over the world and uh, the amazing part is that i don't want to take all the credit because the the method and the system that i built and the team that i built it was made possible through uh, through that team. So I had a team in Australia, uh, New Zealand, Denmark, Norway, uh, here in Texas, and uh, some other states. And everybody would just come on and just coordinate and just broadcast, even our Ireland too. So whole different time zones, people, they would come on prayers are happening, sermons are being preached, and also some of the churches that partner with us, over 40 churches uh, throughout the United States partner with us to make this financially also possible for us to do what we did best. And uh, this platform just so much like grew, like a little child grows. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had never, never in my wildest dream thought that God is gonna use social media at that level to really impact lives where people from India is reaching out and saying like, hey, I'm Hindu. I want to know who's Jesus Christ. Although I heard about Jesus Christ. I challenge you right now that Jesus Christ is the most famous name on the planet than any other name. But the question is, although you heard about Jesus, you know Jesus, but did you receive him as your Lord and Savior? That's the bigger question. Because if you just hurt somebody and never really receiving you in their life, your life can never be impacted. So social media was, for me, really a vehicle to reach the people, to those I will never meet, to those that I will never see, to those that I will never, uh, you know, come across. But at the same time, over influence the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it's not about me. I don't, I'm not all about my showing my face to all different places, although God is using me to bring the gospel to some of the unreached nations. I never heard about Tonga. I was like, where's Tonga? I don't know. People reaching out from Tonga. Hey, we're watching you in Tonga, American Samoa, and uh, some of the different places that I personally never went. And later I found out when I came to America that America Samoa was a really American island in the Pacific. So that was like, it's amazing, Polynesia. So. And you said that you're at the millions. Exactly how many millions did you say? Five million. You, you know, Brother Adnan, that now we have uh, some of the secular stations, uh, particularly the secular news stations, that are struggling even with their viewerships. Now, I'm, I'm not trying to make it about that, but they don't have even nearly as much as what you're mentioning right now. And I think it's so amazing. I hope you all understand why I have Brother Adnan here, because we're talking about a major uh, impact in the spiritual realm, not just for namesake, not just for doing the impact, but for doing an impact for the Lord Jesus Christ in an uncompromised manner. And that's what I love about you, Brother Atnan, that you do not compromise the Word of God. Now, tell us a little bit about, it, <laughs> in regards to you are doing all this, and I know that you want to, that you give God all the glory, but can you tell us about the Atnan uh where he's from, what background he's from, because everyone has sometimes, it seems like even the Lord, when he walked here on earth, it seems that people always wanted to retrieve him back to, you're just from Nazareth. Who, who do you think you are? You know, uh, what do you think you're trying to do? But yet we yeah. now see what happened. Can you tell us a little bit about little Atnan, teenager Atnan, <laughs> young adult Atnan, and how did you go from having this dream? How did this dream come to you? And is there something that you had to overcome that you can give inspiration to other people? Maybe they don't want to go into broadcast, but they have other dreams that God has put in their life. And just tell us a little bit about your life and, and, and how this dream developed and what did you have to overcome to get to that, that point? So the point was like, the first of all, I, I never thought uh, growing up that I would ever preach on the media or through the media. Uh, but I always had the passion, I'm, I'm always passionate about recording videos and all that stuff. And I say that uh, 
I don't say it in a way of like, oh, I managed a television station, but in a very humbly that I say that I don't know everything how television station operate. I don't know like how technically standpoint what it needed to uh, the, st the TV stations to operate and all that stuff. But why, when I was a young, I always had a desire to preach the gospel. That's all. I had a desire to preach the gospel at the age of 15. Mm -hmm. I got saved at age 14 in Pakistan. So at age 15, I started and uh, be become prayer warrior. So it took me one year to become a strong prayer warrior, praying over and over again every day, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., we getting together in the prayer center. People are sitting around in a chain. We holding hands, we praying, or we not holding hands, we praying, but we sitting in a circle, and every single person is praying. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at each other, how they look, what they're wearing, but we are really focused to be in the presence of God. And it was not even a competition, but it was it's it was in terms of like, how can I get to know Christ more? Very Christ center. Although I didn't, I never thought that, oh, yeah, after that, I'm going to be a televangelist or I'm going to interview some of the biggest people here in the ministry. But the goal was like, how can we preach the gospel? Mm -hmm. That was the question always written in my heart. And from Pakistan, going door to door, knocking on the doors, asking people to come in to pray for, from that point to in 2010, launching crusades where we reach uh, i remember very first crusade we did we had ten thousand people come and i that was to me it sounded felt like whole entire world came mm -hmm. because to me it was a ten thousand people was not I, I don't say like in in a very uh normally point but to me it's ten thousand people is like a whole world like came yeah. because that's a lot of people and uh, and then from that point to like launching crusades where 30 to 40,000 people coming in and like I have every step of a way my faith grew. And when I came to America, that dream that I had preaching the gospel, for, it's just for two years, I couldn't do anything. I felt like I got bound because then it took me two years to settle down in America. And then I started uh, evangelistic ministry back, I resumed. And then I started going to the furthest of the countries like Australia and New Zealand, being invited to preach in those countries and started preaching in those countries. But the, to tell you why, who Adnan is, it doesn't matter to me who Adnan is. What I, I never boast on my accomplishment. I always boast on my weakness because when I'm meek, God makes me strong. Jesus makes me strong. And, and that point coming to the media and preaching the gospel, that birth in 2017, really. When I said, hey, I spent so much money out of my own pocket. Nobody donated money. And I'm saying it very straightforward. Nobody I didn't got a single donation. Mm -hmm. And I spent, I made money. And out of that money, I spent it to go all over the world. I don't say it arrogantly, but I say it in a very humble way. Because I thought that was a lesson for me to learn, to learn to sow into a ministry. Mm -hmm. And then when that's began to happen, Pastor Sammy, I think more and more doors. I feel like what where I am today in the media, it's because of those sowing, mm -hmm. because of those obedience, because of those enthusiasm. Enthusiasm for what? Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm for preaching the gospel enthusiasm to reaching people and saying like, hey, listen, I have a passion and I love somebody. I love that person more than breath itself, mm -hmm. more than food, more than anything on the planet of the earth. And what is what, what is that person? Who is What's the name of that person? And that's the person only that above all other names and no names is compared to that name. And it is a name of Jesus Christ. And because of that name, I I didn't care what I look like, where I'm coming from, do I have an accent or not, what's my gender, what's my race, what's the color of my skin. But my passion was like, hey, I want to praise and, ex and and proclaim the name of Jesus Christ in every single plan. 
and God paid, made the, uh, and I never understood. Often people who used to work with me, I was used to take uh, time off and that was my vacation time I was using to go to some of the churches. And people would say like, man, we can't afford to go to Australia. How are you and going to Australia? How is that happening? Where are you getting the money? And I don't know how, where I was getting the money, but God always provided for me. So you, what would you say is you had a passion that was your dream. So in one way or the other, God made it happen. And I, you were so focused on achieving that dream that it didn't matter about you anymore. It was, it was to a certain extent, the dream became the most important thing, not necessarily you. Now, when you came over to the United States, you said that you took two years to get situated. How was it during those two years? Uh, did you, did the enemy try to discourage you or did you just stay steadfast and how, how can you get, use that as an example for people who are maybe at a standstill right now in regards to their dreams? I will say that, you know, it doesn't matter how old are you, whether you, uh, whether you speak the language or not, because when I came to America, uh, they said um, I was turned down at the job. They said because I had a, a language barrier. So uh, and uh, you didn't speak English really, very well, so we can't hire you. So uh, I, I did. Did I stop? No. Was I discouraged at that time? Yes, I was discouraged. Mm -hmm. And did I feel bad? Did I feel giving up? Yes, I did feel like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to, you know, give up because I, maybe that's not for me. Maybe America is not for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember thinking maybe I should go back to Pakistan because I think as a Christian, we become so familiar, so used to doing things the way that things worked for us in the past. Mm -hmm. And I think so our brain scientifically is designed the way so much that we get used to we, we are like always is overprotected we become things overprotect and then and then our brains doesn't like challenges for example uh, outside you go so much cold you instantly want to get a jacket on because you don't want to fight the cold right because your brain, the way God designed your brain is if you go to the height, all of a sudden you want to back up the height because you're afraid to fall. Our brain is overprotected of our body. And that's the way that I understood that, you know, that every single, like if you get on the roller coaster, all of a sudden you're going to get scared and you don't want to get on the roller coaster. But those who got on the roller coaster, did they die? No. And then when I, when I got, to this my mind i need to god brought me here now and that's the new normal for me that means only way i need to look straight i don't have to look back what worked for me it worked and it was a time and a season that was a season in my life but now god brought me at a new place at a new stage amongst new people i need to amend my way and get it just to not become like everybody else but how how can it make new normal for me to work for me mm -hmm. i think after pandemic a lot of churches shut down and those churches never ha opened because why because they were not used to that new normal mm -hmm. and the same way if somebody's hearing me even one person out there can get something out of this i tell you that brother my time on this broadcast is worth it so I didn't go back to Pakistan. I stayed and I'm glad that I stayed back in America. I stayed in America because I learned to fight and I had a passion to grow. When you have a, uh, when you learn to find a uh, fight and passion to grow, <clears throat> then nothing can stop you, even yourself, even your mind, even your brain, because sometimes you got to let, let yourself go mm -hmm. just to, you know, go up because i love maxwell says he said you need to give up to go up that's what happened exactly i had to give up all i had in the past so i can go up and and when you mean like okay you you had to give up uh, i'm sure there what is it in the meantime up until the time that you got to where you're at right now in regards to broadcasting and broadcasting to you know an audience of millions brother uh, and, and that's what amazes me, you know, be, before you go on, that, that's one thing that I really am amazed at. I think some of us who are reaching out to a different audience, way different audience that I, I know that 
I get excited because in, in my line of work, you know, as a professional counselor or as a minister, uh, I've had had people that you would never think that would want to speak with a minister, uh, you know, in regards to a private session or anything like that. But yet they're from a world religion that if they would find out that they are talking to a, a Christian minister, you know, or, you know, they, they would be, you know, executed. Or, you know, that if their friends would find out that they were talking to a, a, a Christian minister, they would be ostracized and say, you, you cannot do that because that goes against who you truly are. But yet there is a hunger, a, a, a true hunger for God, even among people who are not Christians. And I think right now, uh, people who are truly spirit filled and that are into the word, this is the biggest opportunity that we have. And it's not just, you know, whether it's preaching, it, it could be in anything, but you got to let your light shine for the Lord. This is the opportunity. It really excites me the way you're saying it, how you have people from different faiths, from different countries, uh, tuning in to, to hearing what you have to say, because you're giving them Jesus and you're not compromising. And I think that's that's one of the reasons that they're getting attracted is because they know, we, as, as for me, I'm not going to water down something to be apologetic because they might not agree or they might not like it. That doesn't mean that we're rude, but we're giving them, I give them the truth. And as we send this program, just as it is, you know, you know, the real deal of the word. And that's, that's the way we go about it. Up until that time that you now came in, into this, you know, reaching the millions, Brother Atnan. Did you do any kind of training? Did you, did you prepare yourself? Or what were you doing up until the point that you got to that point? I think uh, if, I, if, if I really get to straight to the point and not try to, uh, you know, try, try to be like one of those sailors that, you know, all they have to, end of the day, they're trying to sail something, but they go over and over and over again just to get convinced you to buy it, you know, instead of saying, can you buy, you know, those ads that like 30 minutes ads, right? Mm -hmm. This goes on. But I think what I, what, what I understood, like you need to understand uh, to reposition. I think repositioning, Pastor Sammy, repositioning, I will say that is, is one of the best thing in your life and change is the best change and reposition. So, when you reposition yourself, that means the change. You're changing something, you know. Because often people, often a lot of people that who wants to grow, they don't like the change. Mm -hmm. But they want to grow. And media, same way. I remember before pandemic happened, I went to a lot of pastors. And I beg them, like, hey, let me help you to get on the internet. Let me help you broadcast it. Maybe we should broadcast it on our channel. Nobody would listen to me. But as soon as 2020 happened, COVID happened, everything was shutting down. All of a sudden, I'm getting a lot of emails, calls, and, hey, we remember you asking, uh, hey, how do you do that? You know, but I remember, like, how backward we are, like, because we, we, we don't listen. Mm. And, uh, and, and media, you mentioned the millions. It's not because people, I'm some celebrities, people want to come on and listen to me i think the most important thing is to learn the uh the trend and how to use it mm. i think that's very important because we have so many people with so much wisdom and i tell you like there are people that who can communicate better than i mm. and they have more degree than in the thermometer but can they can can but they cannot reach in masses millions why because they refuse to study the media. They refuse to study the technology. And some people even uh, say that, oh, because I'm old, I can't. No, no, no. But I met some old people who are older, but they are IT experts in technology. They know what exactly they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not technology. I feel like I'm going to break the barrier right now between people over uh, 50, 60 years old and the younger generations. It's just a matter of giving your time to the technology. If you really want to learn something with your heart, you can overcome anything. So social media has been a, a study for me, a journey for me. I need to, first of all, repositioning myself. I had to understand what works. 
I had to try, I tried couple things, uh, tons of tons of things mm -hmm. I tried. But then I, it's, it's, it's the tipping point you got to understand in your life. Like what works for you? Maybe what works for you doesn't work for that person. And what works for that person maybe doesn't work for you. And I tell you that I see so many people out there try to copycat and wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they have the motive behind wrong. And also they refuse to make it unique. Mm -hmm. So when I started this uh, double uh, screen podcasting, one screen, second screen. So not not a lot of people back in 2017 or 2016 were doing it. Not, but as soon as the pandemic happened, all of a sudden I feel that the barrage of podcasts just, just came out. Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of everybody's now doing a podcast. Why? Because I think so you first of all gotta study the trends, you know, and that you gotta really study like what's happening. Be very intentional with the media and see learn the algorithms and uh, and 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 media is an open book to you. Even uh, YouTube sends you messages how you can grow your channel, but do the people take time to read those messages? Few. Mm -hmm. But I tell you that I I I started a channel um, one uh, one month ago, and I, I, first of all, I, let me say that I don't want to take all the credit. I tell people it's a God's favor, and the second, you got to be anointed to do what you do. So I'm anointed to build platforms. I'm anointed to start things from scratch and just find a way to like build it up. I'd say it in a very humble way that I started a channel um, one month ago, YouTube channel. And now that channel has a 250,000 views already. So I don't know if that's a big number to you, but for me, it's big. Yeah. And uh, through my Facebook last three months, I reached over 100 million people 100 million views i sent you um screenshot in the file fi file you can take a look at it mm -hmm. so a different um you know screenshot i sent you and uh, and you have to be intentional you have to find a way and also got to find out what works for you you got to try everything you know i i, I just met a not we good friends pastor so uh he got on the phone with me He's from florida he goes like man um I recently uh, found out that um, I'm starting a show, although I did the show, but that show, and he was honest enough to say it, didn't went very well, but now we're going to do a podcast like Joe Rogan. We're going to try to find, be like that, but at the same time, more Christian. That's that's called repositioning. Mm. Like you're you're ready to change. If something is not working, stop. Try Maybe try something else, right? Not everybody is TikToker. Not everybody's a YouTuber. Not everybody's a Facebooker. Mm -hmm. Every single person is different. So you're going to see what works for you and what you're best at. So yeah, build that. Uh, one thing more. I love what um, what um, what John Maxwell said. He said that uh, stay in your um, string zone, like str uh, stay in your, str what do you say like that? How do you say it? Uh, the your the zone of your strength would that be it? Yes. Okay. Strength zone. Stay in your strength zone, because often people, as a human being, we try to work on things that we are weak to make them better. For example, if you today start working on your Urdu, my friend, and three years you come and you worked it all day and night, try to learn Urdu so you can go to Pakistan. And still you go to Pakistan, you cannot speak as well as you can speak English. So why don't you, instead of working on Urdu, stay in the strength zone and get a translator? That's an easier way to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Why waste the time on something that you know, like, well, man. And, man. and, and that, that's a very important point where a lot of people think that their dreams, they have to compromise them and do something that someone else is doing. Uh, and it reminds me, uh, Abraham Lincoln said it, uh, uh, he had a phrase and he said, I will prepare and someday my chance will come. But he's going to prepare uh, what God specifically had for Abraham Lincoln to do. So he said, I will prepare and someday my, my chance will come. And of course, we know we don't believe in chances. We believe in God ordained opportunities. And, and Zig Ziglar kind of 
put it a little bit more where he said the, the formula for success is preparation plus opportunity equals success. So the thing is, the opportunities come from the Lord. But for now, we need to prepare uh, what God put us you know, to do because it's your right. And I, I've been uh, I've done that mistake, Brother Adnan, where you I want to add to that. Yeah, I, I, I've tried to to see, well, you know, there's doing this and I'm doing maybe I need to add this. And to a point that I was so frustrated and tired and worn out that I wasn't being effective at all because I was to be I was trying to be a jack of all trades instead of focusing exactly on, on where the power strength was at. And that's a very, very good point. And those are very good points for for people who are, are feeling that, you know, their their dreams will never come true because uh, they they just don't seem to get anywhere with them or they're too busy. Probably it's not that there's something obstructing them from their dreams, but they're too busy trying to do what other people are doing instead of doing what God has called them to do. And, and that you're right on point on that. Now, tell me, is in, in regards to the spiritual is there something that you you had to overcome or what did the Lord show you? I mean, you were already preaching and, and, and doing all that. What what did the Lord put in you to be able to get ready or, or, or to launch yourself in regards to that preparation to reach the masses? So uh, uh, on a last note, what we were talking about before I get into that, what God put in me um, to launch me to the masses. So John Wooden was an uh, amazing basketball coach. He said, if you work every, if you practice basketball every day and somebody who is great at basketball don't practice every day because you think he's great, he doesn't need to practice. When you will meet, which person will be better? Mm the one who was consistent practicing, the one who was already, uh, the one who was con consistently practicing mm -hmm. every day and not taking for granted, that's the person going to win when two people meet. So anyhow, um, 20, uh, tw 2009, we launched our own ministry uh, it's because, uh, first of all, desire to preach. And I will say that above all, what helped me the most is, 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 is the courage. God gave me the courage to start things. And, and I, I'm not going to tell you, like, I always want to, I always knew that we're going to reach masses. We're going to reach this and that. I knew that first of all, you got to find your audience. And when you find your audience, their audience will find you, you know, like the people who follow you, people who follow them, they will follow you as well. So you have to think this way, multiplication, you got to think this way in a very multiplication manners. So second thing, I think um, I had a very, the very first thing, it's not a second thing. It's the very first thing. I had a dramatic experience in twenty uh, when I was two thousand um, in two thousand five. Uh, five. I was fourteen years old, and I had a very very dramatic experience. At where I had an out of body experience, where I felt my spirit was elevated, lifted up to the heaven, and I could see my body laying on the ground, uh, and I was like, "Why am I dead?" And out of that experience, it's taught me that, that God is real. Although I was born in a Christian family, born and raised, but I never had a, any personal encounter. Although we read in the Bible, everybody's encounter, but I think I needed a personal encounter. So some people need personal encounter with the Lord. So that, that encounter that I had an out of body experience that shook my life. Second thing is like, I was like, when I was in America, America, 2014, uh, remember that I told you that two years, I was like not praying, not doing anything. So in those two years, I have had some very bad attacks spiritually. So I had 
uh, sleeping and, uh, you know, and then 4 a.m. in the morning, I felt like the Hanuman, that's the, that's the Hindu god. Mm. So Hanuman is a half elephant and a half human. So his, uh, uh, from his face is a face of an elephant. You can also see, you know, and then his, the entire body is a human body. And he was holding, and he holds that his uh, uh, something, I don't know what you call that thing. It's kind of like a, so anyhow, that 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 God showed up in 4 a.m. in the morning and started pulling my legs off the bed. And I started screaming. I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. And all of a sudden, my wife started shaking me. Said, "What's happening? What's what's happening? Are you?" What? I said, "I feel like somebody was pulling my leg. It's it's demon. So it's, it's a Hindu god. So, of course, it's a demon." And um, and then after that, I started, I started praying. I started getting myself. I said, "I need to pray. Heavens and earth gotta move. I need to pray." You know, every day I started praying, and then my life was back up. And then I, not just only that, I also started preaching the gospel. That that's that was the second time was a turning point in my life that I came in back into a ministry. Now you you mentioned you had an out of body experience, uh, Adnan. Is that because you were in in prayer and you had a vision, or did you have an accident, or you got sick? What what happened there? I think um, not, not not accident, no sickness or anything. So I just went, I think it was more like what I can describe now. It's more like a vision uh, to happen to me, outer body experience. It's not like literally, but again, in my body, I could also feel that I cannot breathe. I cannot move. I cannot talk. I cannot scream. Although I want to, I want to um, move my hands and touch somebody to tell them like what's happening to me. I cannot speak. It's like, it's very, I think it's, it's more like a vision, you know, and, uh, and, and then my body is, uh, you, my spirit is gone and I'm trying to get up, but I can't get up. Only my heart is pounding in my chest, which reading the Psalm 91 and Psalm 91 in Urdu is like, so I was reading that, you know, we rehearsed the Psalms in Pakistan and Urdu. So I was reading that Psalm over and over in my heart fast. And um, I was nothing happening. Mm -hmm. But then, um, but then all of a sudden I felt uh, while I was in heaven, I, I said that the, I heard the voice that you're dead. And I said, how can I be died before my time? I'm so young. Mm -hmm. I need a second chance. And all of a sudden, when I said, I need a second chance, I felt like my spirit back in my body and I got up like literally physically got up and I was like, I can't tell whether it was a dream or not. No, I can feel the pain of Joseph and, you know, angels talks to him in the dream and take, don't for, afraid to take Mary home, you know, and then he gets up and then he asks himself, is it a dream or is was that a reality? So, you know, uh, what, what comes to my mind, brother Adnan, if I can share this with you is from Psalm 139, uh, verse 23 to 24. And uh, this is from the Amplified uh, Version. It says this, Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Now, a lot of people think that, it, of course, in the everlasting way is, the way that leads to eternal life in, in Christ, and that is true. But the works that we do here, although they are here in a temporal world, it's going to reap eternal benefits because it will either be for the works of the flesh that lead to death or the works of the spirit that lead to eternal life, and there will be rewards for them in heaven. And it's interesting that you mentioned that, that uh, Hindu God because I, in the same manner, I, I experienced the Lord give me a message. As, as a matter of fact, it's one of our older message, messages that we have uh, on the episode about three demons that kill uh, fathers and, and men. And that specific, uh, it, it started 
with that specific demon god uh, that was killing men because it, it the way the Lord shared it into my spirit is that this specific demon god um, specializes in choking out the life of the identity and calling of men, particularly men. And I believe that through either generational curses or generational influences, there's things from our past that once we start deviating, like you said, right? Positioning yourself in a different area. It's like, no, you have to stay down here. You can't achieve that. You got to stay down here. And then the, the, the dark world or the enemy's camp is going to do everything to start suppressing that calling and probably killing those dreams in your life. And I believe that it is a spiritual battle. And that's why God gave you that opportunity to see you, uh, for you to see yourself, yeah. that there's an eternal purpose. And then the enemy comes and says, no, let's take that away from you. But God, in his omniscience, knew he had to toughen you up before you encountered that demon uh, to see, you know what, Adnan, you got a purpose and you got to fulfill that. And that is amazing. That 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 sense chills the, up my back. And, and, and that's amazing that the Lord is, is doing that in your life. And we thank God for you to be obedient. Well, what would you say if, if you can, I always ask people who are joining us in this program, in a nutshell, what are your words of power and counsel for people to dispel defeating thoughts or just things that are getting in the way of them achieving the dreams for their life, their God-given dreams? And if you would be so kind, would, would you also pray, either pray in the spirit or or be led by the Spirit of God to share words either prophetically or just out of your heart for them. Sure, absolutely. I'll say that who are struggling right now, the word of encouragement is like, never look back and don't always stay in your comfort zone. You know, always try your best and leave the results on God. Mm -hmm. Because often as a human being, we worry about the results. Like, hey, I'm doing so much prayers. What's going to happen? Is my situation going to change or not? Forget about the situation is going to change or not. But say, you know, God, whether my situation changes or not, but I'm just going to worship you anyway. I'm just going to praise you, glorify you. I'm just going to come in your presence and I want to lift you higher up. I want to lift your name higher above every hill that ever existed on the planet of the earth and when you start elevating god in your life the problem will start going down and you bring when you begin to worship i i learned that in my life the soonest you begin to worship depression goes down mm -hmm. so you need to learn worship i'm not talking about any worship but real worship come into the presence of god with the heart of repentance and with the heart of like God, I come in your presence because you don't need me, but I need you in every step of my way. Because when we come with this posture of our heart, God will bless you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity for Pastor Sammy Selzer. I believe that he's doing so much to impact the so many people who will be hearing this uh, broadcast. And also, God, every single person under the sound of my voice, I ask, Lord, touch their heart. Give them a desire to know the other side of you, not the side that everybody knows, but the side of you that nobody knows. And you want to make a relationship with God. You want to have an intimate relationship with the one who created you. God, I decree and declare every obstacle of the people's life that who may be going through stuff. I don't know what they are growing through, whether it's marital, marital, or whether it's a financial or relational. No matter what they are going through physically or medically, but we ask the Spirit of God right now to touch their heart because you are bigger than over problems. Our problems, the mountain of our problems cannot overtake us. God, we ask you, your mercy, to be with us, God. 
God, I thank you what you're about to do in the life of those that it will be hearing. And we ask healing, deliverance, breakthrough to take place in the lives of those that who are watching this broadcast and will be listening to this broadcast. And also, God, touch their heart and those that who know them, they can tell the difference that something happened in your life that that rock your world. It turns everything in your life ups and downs. So people who meet, they can pass this comment to them. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this broadcast. Help Pastor Sammy to grow more and more on the platform so he can reach his masses. And thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Brother Adnan. And we pray that God multiply everything. It's impressionable what God is doing in your life. But I pray that you now grow by the hundreds and hundreds of millions now to impact. We are at a time where we have to impact uh, the kingdom of darkness with the kingdom of light. And I praise God for what you're doing. And may God richly uh, enlarge your territory and, and, and make it even more and more effective for the glory of God. And everyone else, if there is something that is, you know, that is beyond just you making a, a difference, a change in, in repositioning yourself, maybe you're battling something even stronger that, that you think that you need some help with, please reach out. Our numbers are in uh, the email or our phone number is in the description of this episode. So please contact, uh, contact us there, send us an email or call us and leave a message and we will get back to you. And until next time, uh, I will see you here again, Brother Adnan. Thank you so much for joining us and everybody else. Thank you so much. We'll see you here again so that together we will supernaturally continue to walk on water. Be blessed. Thank you.